Hello students, welcome to Exam Companion. In the previous video, we covered the explanation of Chapter 1, Environment. In this video, we will cover the NCERT explanation of Chapter 2 of Geography Textbook for students of Class 7th. The name of the chapter is Inside Our Earth. So students, before starting off with the explanation, let's first understand some basic but important points. It is impossible for us to reach the center of the earth because the radius of the earth is 6,371 kilometers. You can compare it with the distance between Kashmir and Kanyakumari which is 2,800 kilometers approximately. So to reach the center of the earth you'll have to dig more than twice the distance between Kashmir and Kanyakumari. The other important thing to remember here is that temperature below earth increases rapidly, so much so that even rocks are in molten form. And hence, the deepest mine in the world is only about 4 kilometers deep, which is in South Africa. Now students, a question may arise that if we cannot dig deep enough to reach the center of the earth, then how do we know? about the interior of the earth. There are many methods for that but the most common sources are rocks from mining area and volcanic eruptions. Magnetic sources and seismic waves are also used. Now students, this is the diagram of interior of the earth. Here you can see that the first layer or the outermost layer that is in mustard color is the crust and it is 35 kilometers deep. The next layer that is the brown colored layer is 2900 kilometers in thickness and it is the mantle. Next we have the core mantle boundary. Now this is not a layer it separates the core and the mantle. And finally we have the outer core which is 2250 kilometers thick and the inner core which is 1220 kilometers deep. Now students moving forward if the question comes in exam asking about the three layers of earth then you have to mention core, mantle and crust because the core mantle boundary separates the core and the mantle it is not a layer and inner core and the outer core are two sub layers of the core itself. Now just to give you an idea, this diagram shows that mantle constitutes about 84% of the earth's volume, core constitutes 15% and crust constitutes just 1%. Students, the diagram depicting the layers of the earth is very important, so please keep it in mind. Now let's study crust in detail. The first thing that should come to your mind is that it is the thinnest of all layers which you also saw in the diagram in previous slide. Next it is brittle in nature which means that it is hard but can be broken with ease. Now it doesn't mean that you can break it with your hands but it is easier to break as compared to the deeper layers that is the mantle and the core. Also students. Pay attention, the thickness of the crust varies on continents and oceans. It is 35 kilometers thick on continental masses. The main mineral constituents or the main components of continental masses are silica and aluminia, which means that silica and aluminia are present in abundance in the crust on continents. Hence, it is called Sile, taking initials from both silica and alumina. Si from silica and Ai from alumina becomes Sile, S-I-A-L. Similarly, as I told you, if you dig on the floor of an ocean, then you will find crust only up to 5 kilometers. Beyond that, there will be mantle, also silica and magnesium 
at the main minerals found in this crust. Hence, it is called Saima. Again, taking Si from silica and Ma from magnesium. Now, students, the next layer that we will study is mantle. So, as you all already know from the diagram that it is the layer beneath the crust and it is about 2900 kilometers in thickness. Also, students, in the last chapter, we studied lithosphere. So, a question may arise that what constitutes lithosphere? Because in this chapter, we have not studied lithosphere till now. So, the answer is the entire crust and the upper part of mantle makes lithosphere. Also, remember that mantle constitutes 84% of the earth's volume. Now students, the last and the final layer that is core. So it is the innermost layer that also surrounds the earth's center. Also as you saw in the diagram, it has two sub layers, the inner core and the outer core. Now the core is mainly, mainly made up of nickel and iron. Nickel is represented as Ni and iron is represented as Fe. Hence, core is called knife, N-I-F-E. Also, a point worth noting is that inner core is present in solid state and outer core is present in liquid state. This liquid is nothing but the magma or molten rock. Next, we will study about fossils. Now, fossils are actually the remains or the traces of plants and animals trapped in layers of rocks. So what do we mean by this is that small amount or small quantity of plants or animals get trapped in the rocks and over hundreds and thousands of years those remains become traces. Fossils can be very large in size or they can be very small. Also the bones shells, feathers of animals and birds and the leaves of plants all can become fossils. So I hope it's clear. Students, the remaining part of the chapter is based on rocks. So let's first understand what is a rock. A rock is a natural mass of mineral matter that makes up the earth's crust. So we have to notice two points here. First, that rocks are made up of minerals and second, that rocks make up the earth's crust. Now, a question may arise. Why are rocks important and why are we studying them? Because as we studied in the second slide that we get to know about earth from rocks and volcanic eruptions. So we can say that they hold the history of the earth. And also, since they are made up of minerals, they are essential for future. Also, rocks are used to make buildings, roads and monuments. And they are also used in many games like Stapu. There are mainly three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. We will study each of them in detail now. The first so the type of rocks are Igneous rocks. Igneous is derived from a Latin word ignis, which means fire. Now, as we know, the temperature below the surface of Earth increases rapidly. So, this high temperature even melts the rocks, and this molten rock is called magma. So, when magma is which is generally present in mantle cools and becomes solid, then it forms igneous rocks. So, igneous rocks are formed when magma cools and becomes solid. If this magma cools inside the earth's crust, then the rocks then formed are called intrusive igneous rocks. Now, a question may arise that how can magma cool inside the surface of the earth? Because we have discussed throughout the chapter that temperature increases inside earth's surface. So the answer is that as we know, most of the magma is present in mantle 
which is the second layer and the magma has a temperature of about 700 to 1200 degrees celsius whereas the crust of the earth is about 200 degree celsius which is much much lower than 700 degree celsius hence slowly and steadily the molten magma can cool inside the crust of the earth i hope this is clear to you okay so another thing the more obvious one is that molten magma comes out of earth's surface through volcanoes and it rapidly cools down and becomes solid now such rocks are called extrusive igneous rocks you can compare here that ex means external means external to earth's surface these rocks are formed external to earth's surface not internal to earth's surface okay so let's study the difference between extrusive and intrusive igneous rocks so extrusive igneous rocks as you all know are formed when lava or molten magma cools on the surface of earth whereas intrusive igneous rocks are formed when lava cools deep inside earth's crust next extrusive rocks are also called volcanic rocks whereas intrusive rocks are also called plutonic rocks now as we have studied since rocks inside the earth's surface cool slowly so they form large rocks or we can say that they have large grain structure whereas the lava when it comes to earth's surface cools rapidly so they do not get enough time to form large structures hence they have fine grain structure basalt is an example of extrusive igneous rock the deccan plateau is made up of basalt whereas granite is an example of intrusive igneous rocks now students imagine a big rock rolling down a slope or a hill so what will happen it will get broken into smaller fragments right here i have shown two fragments but it can get broken down into multiple tens twenties of fragments so these small fragments are called sediments okay so now we will study about sedimentary rocks so what happens is when rock break down into many small sediments these sediments are transported from one place to another by either air or water hence these sediments over the time are compacted and hardened to form sedimentary rocks now sediment sedimentary rocks may contain fossils of plants and animals also examples of sedimentary rocks are limestone rock salt and sandstone students please take note that sedimentary rocks are the ones that can contain fossils of plants and animals it is an important question and finally it's important to note that initially these rocks are not rocks they are sediments and then they are compacted to become rocks okay i hope i am clear next we will study about the third type of rocks which are metamorphic rocks so igneous and sedimentary rocks become metamorphic rocks if high temperature and pressure is applied on them but if the heat or pressure is very high then they will become magma that is molten rock examples of metamorphic rocks are marble which is formed from limestone and slate which is formed from clay now students as you have seen that one type of rock can change into another type this happens in a cyclic manner we will see how we can say that transformation of rock from one form to another in a cyclic manner is called a rock cycle so when one type of rock changes into another type and this happens in a cyclic manner it is called a rock cycle so let's see how the rock cycle works 
So as we know that when magma cools down and solidifies, igneous rocks are formed. Then igneous rocks are broken down into small particles by erosion to form sediments. Erosion means getting broken down into small pieces by wind or water. Now the sediments are compacted or compressed to form sedimentary rocks, the second type of rocks. Finally, as we know, sedimentary rocks when subjected to high temperature and pressure form metamorphic rocks. Also, if metamorphic rocks remain under high temperature and pressure, they finally melt to become magma. So students, you can see one complete cycle forming here. Now let's study further in detail. Now we know that igneous rocks also get converted into metamorphic rocks under high temperature and pressure. Also metamorphic and sedimentary rocks just like igneous rocks can break down into sediments. And finally igneous rocks if apply, uh, applied high temperature get molten and gets converted into magma. So students this is the rock cycle. I hope it's clear to you. Now we will study the final topic of this chapter which is minerals. So students what are minerals? Minerals are naturally occurring substances which have fixed chemical composition. Minerals have certain physical properties like color, hardness etc. which means that different minerals can be of different color and have different levels of hardness. Minerals are important for humans as they are used in medicines, fertilizers and industries. Examples of some minerals are coal, natural gas, petroleum, gold, iron etc. So students remember that minerals are used in medicines fuels, fertilizers and industries. Okay. So that completes our chapter two of geography textbook. Students for NCERT solutions and important question answers, please visit the link given in the video description. And also please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So I'll see you in the next lecture on chapter 3 are changing earth